he's begun to receive quite widespread and often viral attention for his uh, various views on cultural and political issues. I, for once, was quite quite influenced by him during 2018, 2019, with his self-improvement uh, lectures and thoughts around people, uh, you know, picking up their own cross, so to speak, and gaining personal responsibility and, go- and setting your own goals and stuff. Why is he so misinterpreted uh, by the media? Well, that's funny. Look, I... I've obviously I've met Jordan Peterson. I've interviewed him, um, and still correspond with him occasionally. Um, it's a bit like like what we talked about about journalism. Actually, all his academic stuff doesn't really matter that much. He has an ability to say what inherently you know to be true. And that you are thinking because he understands the psychology of how we construct our lives and our egos and how we interact with other people because he's studying it. He's an expert. Um, And he was, when I started work back on, um, on, gosh, it was Magic Talk. I said to my producer in November, I knew that he was coming in March, I think, to New Zealand. And I said, I don't care if you do nothing, provide me no support as a producer, but I want to have an interview with Jordan Peterson. And I'd kind of identified him very early on as someone who was going to be in the culture wars. Mm. And you could see how New Zealand's left-wing movement was was moving on him. And I had read a lot of his stuff and looked back. And what I couldn't find, I couldn't find homophobia, intolerance. I couldn't find a whole lot of right-wing extremism either. Yeah, I found a lot nothing. of common sense. And I showed a few other people his videos and they said, well, he, that's just like what a good dad would say. You know? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I tried to get him and there's people who are very cooperative. It's a pretty, it's a pretty multi-layered zone of access around Jordan Peterson. In what um, ways? Is he just, is he just that oh, protected no, now? I, 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 to the publishing house here, they said oh, he's got his own team of people. They don't really communicate. They're a law unto themselves. And you understand when you're in the, riding that sort of global popularity wave. Um, so we had at best a promise that we might get two minutes with him on the radio or something. But in New Zealand, a very extreme left-wing group called Aotearoa Peace Action mm-hmm put out a press release about eight days ahead of his um, ahead of his um, visit saying that Jordan Peterson was reprehensible and he represented a threat to all decency and values in New Zealand. So I thought we'd do an interview on the radio, so we rang them up and they agreed to do an interview. <laughs> And um, what was it like to interview him? Like, were you conscious about uh, how well, it was going to go? Well, look, look, can I just say the person may have been going through a gender transition, the person I was talking to. Mm-hmm. But I've done some research on this group and found that just a year or so earlier, they had created and planted a fake bomb in a movie theater in Wellington full of old people. It was a movie about Ben Gurion, and of course, they're pro Palestinians. Right. Um, and a number of their key players were people who had been arrested for literally as close as you get in those days, acts of terrorism in New Zealand. And let's just say the spokesman they put up had no idea. And it was probably the most clinical and calm interview I've ever done. It was on camera and it was on audio. Um, it's had, I think, about 860,000 views on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. But one person who saw it very quickly was Jordan Peterson. Right, right. And after the interview, my producer comes up with her phone and she said, Jordan Peterson is on the line. Wow. From Australia. And I said, hi, Jordan. He said, I just saw your interview. He said, that was better than Kathy Newman. Nice. Um, he said, what do you want? And I said, tomorrow, I want an hour with you by Skype from Sydney. You'll take calls from the listeners. And he did it for me. And then he put out on his YouTube platform yeah. that interview and the interview with the Auckland Peace Action person. 
And that's probably the most viewed piece of media I've ever done. You don't sort of recreate that. It was sheer dumb luck. And that in many ways set the tone for what I guess the magic talk show has been about. And that is that people do not listen to what people like George Peterson say. They simply decide, oh, what side am I on? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'll go with the cool kids or the woke kids. Um, Peterson's had his problems. Um, he's had family problems. And to be honest, given the when I met him, when he came to Auckland a couple of weeks later, um, I looked at him and I actually said to the person I was sitting next to, I said, there is a guy right on the edge. Um, and he was clearly heading, you know, to do what he did and to get that level of fame and accolades and also that level of hatred. Mm. Um, it out here. But I'll tell you what else I saw at the meeting I went to. I saw a hell of a lot of um, young people, young men. I saw a hell of a lot of Asian people. And I saw a disproportionately large number of gay people, and including in that particular night, um, people who I think were transgender or something. And mm. they were happy to be there and talk to them. Mm. And I don't think he was talking down to people at all. And I was amazed at the diversity. Yeah, it's, it certainly helped me. Like it was, you know, these, he sort of ex expresses points that you subconsciously know, but you're not, right. you're not are aware of yeah. at the same time. Like yeah. you're not consciously aware of it. And he, he's got a way of, of, of talking that it really resonates with a lot of young, as he said, um, disproportionately young men, uh, even, yeah. you know, people of minority groups like gay people, transgender people, because it's all about not comparing yourself to other people and picking up your own cross and, tidying up your own, you know, tidying up your own room was, is basically just get get your own shit sorted before you go out and criticize the world. Like yeah. make sure that the things in your yeah. own backyard are working as they should before you try to take it out on other thing, people. Once you, yeah. Once you've done that, Sam, and you've tidied up your own room, that can sometimes be really hard, right? Mm. Oh, really hard. And I think yeah. once you've been through that process, you look at people who you might think don't have their shit together. Yeah. And I think once you've been through the process, you're, less inclined to go you don't have your shit together yep. and say how can i help yeah exactly you know yeah. <clears throat> yeah which is a far better way to run the world than running around saying that jordan peterson he's bad you know <laughs>